A very warm uh, good morning to you from St. Peter Mancroft Church. The city clock is just striking 10 o'clock and I'm Edward Carter, the vicar here at the church. A welcome to the latest in our series of reflections under the heading Looking for Meaning and Purpose. These reflections happen three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. During the lockdown, they're timed at 10 o'clock. We hope if the lockdown lifts uh, that we'll be able to revert to the usual time of one o'clock. So a warm welcome to you today if you're joining me on YouTube or perhaps catching up later on. We may hear this morning some noises off because we have some roof work going on at the church and some scaffolding is being erected on the south side of the building and uh, the people putting the scaffolding up are working hard today um, installing it. So if there are some strange noises in the background, then that's all that it is. So I'm speaking to you today from the city of Norwich. And if you were to say to someone out here in the city, are you a city fan? Then their minds would instantly jump, I suspect, to the football team. Are you a city fan? Yes, I'm a city fan. I support Norwich City. That's the name of the football club here. And I mention them today because uh, the good news is that they've just gone top of the championship, not the premiership. They were relegated last season, but they've just gone top of the championship and are nicely poised, ready, who knows, perhaps to be promoted again. And if you were to talk a bit more with a real football fan, I'm, I'm a fan of Norwich City, living here in Norwich, uh, but I'm not one of the real dyed-in-the-wool fans, I'm afraid. Apologies for that. But if you were to talk to one of my friends here in the city who was a City fan, then it wouldn't take long for the conversation to turn to the relationship it's one way of putting it, with Ipswich Town, which is one of the other East Anglian football clubs. And indeed, the conversation quite soon would uh, flip into a kind of visceral competitiveness with that other football, town, down, uh, football club down in Suffolk, Ipswich Town. There is a great rivalry, a competitive rivalry between Norwich City and Ipswich Town that's played out over the decades. And if you're not from East Anglia, uh, if you don't know much about Norwich City and Ipswich Town, uh, you nonetheless might know of perhaps Liverpool and Everton, two football clubs um, in the city of Liverpool who are great rivals. Manchester United, Manchester City, again, great rivalry there. Arsenal and Spurs. Uh, the Archbishop of York was uh, only the other day on the radio, I think, talking about how he's a Spurs fan, but nonetheless um, accepts somehow there might be a place in heaven for those who support Arsenal. You'll have noticed that all these different football club rivalries um, are between clubs that are actually local to each other, and that's an interesting thing uh, to notice. But this competitive spirit, the competitiveness that seems to be a very uh, real part of life and the world in which we live. Well, I think I've noticed over the years uh, that it does seem to happen a lot. It's a significant part of our lives as human beings and as we organise ourselves into clubs, into societies, different things like that. And competitiveness, I suspect, is often rather frowned upon as a destructive thing. When people are competing, we have this picture of being at loggerheads and it not being helpful at all. And indeed, that is sometimes very much the case, of course, when competitiveness spirals into a real destructive fighting between different people, between different nations, even in time of war, then there's nothing worse, really. So much damage is done. And there's this kind of underlying assumption that cooperation is better than competitiveness. But I like to feel that there's something about the competitive streak, which is within all of us, there's something about that competitive streak which can be understood in a positive way. Perhaps if we use the word emulation rather than competitiveness, it, it helps a bit. When we see someone doing something really well, we might want to compete with them, but we certainly might want to emulate them, uh, be inspired by them, um, so that we can achieve our own things as well. 
just at the moment on television, uh, it's the Great British Bake Off, and that's a competition. It's a competition between various budding bakers, very good bakers often, um, and the truth is that it is a competition. They're competing against each other. Um, each time someone uh, drops out and is sent home. But nonetheless, um, it's not a destructive competition, really, in my mind. It's a competition that uh, brings out the best in these various budding bakers. Or think back a bit um, to those uh, halcyon days when John McEnroe and Bjorn Borg were battling it out, competing with each other on the tennis court. Um, some amazing matches were played between them. And, of course, they were competing fiercely and such different characters as well. But in that competition, somehow they brought out the best in each other in terms of their skill on the tennis court. And, indeed, that's what they said much later on. They said that as that competition between them had unfolded, so they had been um, inspired to great things. And here in Norwich, in this city where... We're always looking to uh, enrich our city life, our community life together. We're a city full, as I'm sure every other place is, full of sports teams and societies of different kinds. We're a place full of businesses, small and large. Our market is just next to the church here, lots of small market stalls. And of course, they're competing in a way with each other and other businesses. All sorts of institutions in this great city of Norwich, in a way competing, jostling, emulating one another in our common life together. And I believe in that, let's call it competition for the moment, within that competitiveness, great power and endeavour is released in a creative and very often very positive way. I mentioned um, as I began, about the local aspect of rivalries. Uh, Norwich City and Ipswich Town was the example I began with. That sense of being near to someone, next door to them, local to them, that's when those competitive uh, instincts perhaps kick in. You have only to look at uh, families, of course. Siblings often um, are very close indeed to each other, but also deeply competitive with one another. And of course, it's true that you have to know your competition very well. I was briefly running a business of my own many years ago, and the people you have to know most about are the ones you're competing with, because you're offering something alongside what they're offering. You need to know what they're doing, what they're planning, what they're good at, and what therefore you need to be good at as well. You have to know your competition. And out of that closeness, I believe at best, comes a kind of coexistence and solidarity together. It's an extraordinary closeness that sometimes, out of the competitive instinct, is stronger than when we talk about, in a more straightforward way, cooperating with one another, even the Christian language of loving one another, which can be very hard to do. Think again of uh, the Bake Off program. The bakers are competing with one another, yes, but an extraordinary warmth and closeness uh, grows up whenever a series of that program is filmed. And as someone leaves, is competed out of the show, there are all sorts of hugs and tears are shed as that person departs because of the closeness that's been forged between those people. So as I end, I think I want to suggest, as we all strive for the meaning and purpose of life for us as a community and as individuals within it, I think I want to suggest that uh, cooperation and competition, emulation, can exist together. In fact, do always exist alongside each other as we flourish alongside one another as well. And all of those things, that sense of uh, competing, striving, but also the care we have for one another and the solidarity we enjoy with one another, I believe all of those things somehow bind us closer together 
um, within that, that framework of mutual regard, mutual care, and mutual respect. So I'm going to end with, with a short prayer from this city of Norwich and this church of St. Peter Mancroft. Lord, we praise you again for the extraordinary gift of life and the myriad different strands that lie within life. We pray that you would take our competitive instinct, the streak that lies within us as individuals and as communities, you would take that competitive streak and forge it into something glorious and beautiful in your eyes, that we might be bound together as a society where mutual regard and mutual respect are strong and where the ways in which we emulate one another bring glory to our lives and to you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.